Hello, a warm welcome to you from SGT University. I am Dr. Asha Gandhi, Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. Today we will be learning about molecular basis of muscle contraction. In today's session, the learning objectives are molecular basis of skeletal muscle contraction under which we will be covering molecular machinery and sliding filament theory of muscle contraction and rigor mortis. Before learning the molecular basis of skeletal muscle contraction, let's revise the general mechanism of muscle contraction. When a nerve is stimulated, an action potential is developed which travels along the motor nerve and there is release of acetylcholine at neuromuscular junction which causes generation of end plate potential. This initiates an action potential and there is propagation of action potential on the sarcolemma. The action potential moves along the T-tubule and voltage changes are sensed by DHP or dihydropyridine receptors which causes opening up of calcium release channels present on the terminal cistern leading to increase in calcium release in the sarcoplasm. This increase in calcium in sarcoplasm increases attractive forces between actin and myosin filaments causing initiation of contraction. Following this, calcium ions are pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum which causes termination of muscle contraction. Now coming to molecular mechanism of skeletal muscle contractions, these diagrams demonstrate the basic mechanism of muscle contraction. The upper diagram shows the sarcomere in relaxed state where the actin filaments extending from two Z discs barely overlap one another and the lower diagram shows sarcomere in contracted state. As you can see the two Z disc they are coming close to each other which is due to overlapping of actin filaments to maximum extent and shortening the sarcomere. Contraction results from sliding action of actin filaments among the myosin filaments which can be explained by molecular basis of muscle contraction. In 1954, two scientists, A.F. Huxley and H.E. Huxley, put forward the molecular basis of skeletal muscle contraction by sliding filament theory or mechanism, which is also known as ratchet theory or walk along theory. This theory explains the sliding of filaments by formation of cross bridges between head of myosin and actin molecules. Now let's discuss about molecular characteristics of actin and myosin filaments. First, let's look at the molecular characteristics of myosin filament. Myosin filament constitute thick filament of the sarcomere. Each myosin filament consists of 200 or more myosin molecules and each myosin molecule has 6 polypeptide chains. Two heavy chains which are in double helix to form one tail and the other ends are folded to form two globular heads and four light chains, two are connected to each head. Tails of all myosin filaments bundle together to form body of the myosin filament. Part of the body of each myosin molecule hangs out to the side along with head which is called as arm. Protruding arms along with the head together they are called as cross bridges. 
Each cross bridge has two flexible points which are called as hinges. One hinge is present at the junction between arm and the body and the other hinge is present between the arm and the head. Another very important aspect is that myosin head functions as an ATPs enzyme and this property allows the head to cleave the ATP and use the energy derived from ATPs high energy phosphate bond to energize the contractile process. Next is actin filaments which are the thin filaments in a sarcomere. They are composed up of actin, tropomyosin and troponin complex. As you see in this upper diagram, these light pink are actin, dark pink are tropomyosin and the three circular components, they are the troponin complex. And in the lower diagram, this is the model of actin filament. Blue are the actin, orange are tropomyosin and yellow are troponin complex. Now coming to actin. The backbone of actin filament is F-actin. It is a double-stranded protein molecule. The two strands are wound in a double helix. Each strand of F-actin helix is composed of polymerized G-actin molecules. Attached to each G-actin molecule is one molecule of ADP which are the active sites with which myosin head binds. Tropomyosin is composed of, of several tropomyosin molecules. They lie in grooves between the two F actin helix and they cover the active sites on F actin helix as you can see that they are covering the active sites which are represented by the dark dots on the actin molecules and prevent the interaction with the myosin. Third component of actin filament is troponin which consists of three subunits I, T and C. I binds to F actin and prevents interaction of myosin with actin. T binds other troponin components to tropomyosin. C binds calcium ions that initiates muscle contraction. Discussing about sliding filament theory of muscle contraction. Initiation of contraction starts with cross bridge formation. During the resting state, troponin I it is slightly bound to actin and tropomyosin molecules they block the binding site on the actin as you can see in this diagram they are overlapping the binding sites which are the black dots on the actin filament so in the resting state, no cross bridges are formed between actin and myosin head because troponin and tropomyosin complex, they constitute the relaxation protein and tropomyosin are covering the active sites on the actin. Hence, this inhibits the interaction between the actin and myosin head. During action potential, calcium is released from terminal cisternae of sarcoplasmic reticulum and activates sliding filament system. First, calcium binds with the troponin C, which causes tropomyosin to move laterally 
in the groove and hence uncover the binding sites on the actin as shown in the diagram and myosin head immediately binds to active site on the actin and cross bridges are formed between actin and myosin the process of formation of actin myosin complex is initiated with when head of myosin molecules bind with atp during resting state myosin head has atps activity which immediately breaks down atp into adp and inorganic phosphate adp and inorganic phosphate remain attached to myosin head hence myosin head remains energized and activated myosin head extends perpendicularly and get attached to actin when active sites on actin are uncovered next important step is power stroke when myosin head binds to actin the energized head immediately releases adp and inorganic phosphate from the complex formed with that myosin head flexes at hinge towards the arm of cross bridge which generates mechanical force this is called as power stroke and thus actin filament is pulled and slide over the myosin filament towards the center of sarcomere after the power stroke there is detachment of myosin head from the active site on actin a fresh atp molecule binds to the bent head which will lead to dissociation of myosin head from the actin this diagram shows when myosin head binds to atp the atps activity in the myosin head immediately cleaves atp into adp and inorganic phosphate and the head becomes perpendicular and energized now when calcium binds to troponin c then tropomyosin uncovers the binding sites on the actin and myosin head gets attached to actin with that adp and inorganic phosphate are released and power stroke occurs which bends the head towards the center of the sarcomere and with that actin filaments slide over the myosin after that new atp gets attached to myosin and myosin head gets detached and the cycle is repeated thus sliding is produced by breaking and reforming the cross bridges the width of a band remains same whereas the two z lines move closer together during each cross bridge cycle the muscle shortens by 1% the process proceeds again and again until the actin filaments pull the z membrane up against the end of the myosin filament or until the load on the muscle becomes too great for further pulling to occur let's summarize the molecular basis of muscle contraction the myosin head has atps activity which hydrolyzes atp into adp and inorganic phosphate this causes myosin head to get energized and making it perpendicular when calcium ions bind to troponin c and the active sites on the actin are exposed the energized myosin head immediately binds to actin this causes myosin head to flex towards the center of the sarcomere at the hinge between the myosin head and the arm 
This is power stroke which slides the actin filaments towards the center of the sarcomere. Now new ATP gets attached to the myosin head and which is causing cross bridges to detach from the actin filament. This contraction cycle continues if the ATP is available and calcium level is high in the sarcoplasm. When calcium is pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the calcium level decreases in sarcoplasm and contraction is terminated leading to relaxation of the muscle. Now coming to applied aspect that is rigor mortis. Several hours after death, all the muscles of the body go into a state of contracture. That is, the muscles contract and become rigid even without action potentials. This is called rigor mortis. Rigidity occurs because of fixation of cross bridges of the myosin head to actin filaments due to loss of all the ATPs. Normally, ATP is required for detachment of the cross bridge from the actin filaments causing relaxation. Muscles remain in rigor until muscle proteins deteriorate about 15 to 25 hours later. This results from autolysis caused by enzymes released from cellular lysosomes. After this, rigidity disappears. These events occur more rapidly at higher temperature. Appearance and disappearance of rigor mortis is used by forensic experts in fixing the time of death. Let's recapitulate. Calcium binds to which component of troponin to initiate contraction? Troponin C. Troponin tropomyosin complex inhibits interaction between actin and myosin head. ATPase activity is present in which part of myosin? Myosin head. The energy which is required for power stroke is stored as ADP and inorganic phosphate. Rigidity of body muscles after death is called rigor mortis. State of contracture in rigor mortis is due to loss of ATP. So today we learnt molecular basis of skeletal muscle contraction and next time we meet we will be exploring structure of cardiac muscle and the properties of cardiac muscle. Keep learning, keep growing, see you next time.